Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing or unwrapping, if you will, of the NVIDIA GTX Titan Z. This card launched at the end of May 2014, priced at US dollars arguably one of the most expensive and also one of the most powerful cards ever made. Of course, times have changed, and so has pricing. You can now find it for $14.99 and maybe even less, which to me makes it a value. Uh, if you're wondering why you're looking at a Main Gear mouse pad, the logo right there, that's because Main Gear is the boutique builder out of New Jersey that I selected to put together a beast of a machine for me. And at the center of that beast is the Titan Z we're about to look at right now. So you can see already a giant package here, and that's because after all, the Z is essentially two Titan Blacks compressed into a single card solution. And in doing that, uh, originally at launch, this was off-putting for a lot of people because they wondered why on earth you would pay $3,000 for two basically $1,200 Titan Black cards that each had 6 gigs of RAM, uh, you know, basically identical. And even though this is a single card, keep in mind that because of its size, it will take up two and a half PCI Express slots in terms of space, really three in the real world. So there are benefits to this, and for those of you that are wondering, I'll talk about that during the course of this video while we take a look at this beast, which by the way is quite heavy, and that's because it is gigantic, and that's to be expected. Now this is a reference card. Uh, you can see Obviously, that's the only way really, uh, well, I shouldn't say it's the only way, but that's predominantly the only form that you're going to see the Z in, and it is just a monster of a card. I'm going to also be taking a look at the GTX 980, which is right now one of the most popular cards on the market, and for good reason. At its price point, that $500 sweet spot, maybe even less over Black Friday, you're getting incredible performance uh, when it comes strictly to gaming, but the Z is designed to be the best, really, of both worlds, and that's why it appears to me. That's part of the discussion I had with Main Gear about why it would be a great fit for me, especially at the newfound price point. Because what you're getting here, again, two Titan Blacks in a single card, which equates to two GPUs, each clocked at 876 megahertz. Uh, then on top of that, you've got uh, 5760, 5760 CUDA cores. Uh, and all to boot with 12 gigs of RAM. Now keep in mind, because this is really an SLI on a single card, there's only six gigs of RAM that's actually going to be utilized in the same fashion that an SLI would have a bit of a bottleneck there. But that also is some great future proofing if you plan to do anything in 4K or just want to be able to run games in the future uh, that will require at least somewhere uh, between six and eight gigs of RAM because that is the direction that things are going, whether you realize it or not. Of course, you can wait for the 980 refresh with 8 gigs of RAM, which is going to be a much less expensive solution. But if you're like me and need a rendering beast as well as a great graphic solution for gaming, the Z all of a sudden becomes an incredible value, at least in my opinion, uh, at the very least. So you can see right there, in terms of ports, uh, we've got two DVIs, and then right here we've got uh, an HDMI port as well as a display port. Now, uh, newer cards like the 980 definitely lean more on DisplayPort, and that's because, quite frankly, DisplayPort is where everything is going. For my setup, uh, multiple displays, wanting to be able to game high quality ultra essentially, and also make that transition into 4K, uh, which I haven't yet for PC gaming, the Z seems to be a perfect solution, again, at its price. And that's what I want to reiterate over and over again, because when you look at a card like this, uh, you have to remember, again, that two Titan Blacks still run roughly $1,000 each. So essentially now, what once was an overpriced uh, you know, doubling of the Titan Blacks has become a value uh, path to it. Although wanting to SLI two Titan Zs becomes a little bit ridiculous, especially since I just told you that it effectively takes up three slots. So in the case that my build... Uh, at least we'll be working with, the Z is going to be the only card in that machine. My other option was to go the route of two 980s, but the CUDA cores really was what, and I don't mean to sound ridiculous, but if you have to do rendering of any sort, 3D modeling, whatever it may be, if that is part of your business, that's where this card looks a lot like a Quadro, uh, at least on paper, series card, but at an incredible price now that it's dropped. Keep in mind, of course, we all know it's working with 
uh, GTX uh, traditional graphics drivers for gaming, so you're not going to get the Quadro performance, but if you're running software that is able to utilize all of the CUDA cores here, the potential uh, processing power really can only be bottlenecked by the hardware you surround it by when you think about it. And that's why my build, which I will be getting to in a later video, uh, is far from being a bottleneck for this card. And I made sure of that, uh, and that was critical to me in terms of future-proofing the machine. So the Z right now is a value in my opinion. Yes, once upon a time, this was an overpriced basic piece of bragging right, you know, proof of concept and technology. Uh, keep in mind also that one of the things that I personally loved about this card is that you've got one of the most quiet solutions that you can possibly get when it comes to SLI performance. So uh, because of that single fan that you're looking at right there, of course, this is a reference design. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, but when you, again, think about everything that's on board here, Yes, it's not the fastest gaming card, but when it comes to 4K competency, that VRAM is critical. Again, 12 gigs total, six for each GPU, and if you're like me and do care, as I mentioned before, about rendering and then also driving multiple displays, yes, that can all be done with a two gig card. I was working with a GTX 670 before the Titan Z with two gigs of RAM, so you can only imagine what kind of upgrade this or a 980 would be. But there's an extra element, an extra component to the Titan Z that I think most gamers missed or at least didn't understand. They really looked at it just as two Titan Blacks for an extra grand, which made no sense. And I understand perfectly why. And that's why it's come down in price so much. So that pretty much sums up the first look today. Uh, unwrapping, unboxing of this card. By the way, it is a PNY card for those of you that are curious. Uh, I'll be pairing it with an EVGA uh, Micro uh, X99 board, and I'll get to the build in later videos and really show off uh, what this card can do and also uh, what the 980 performs like, a single 980, when compared to this solution as well, because the 980 has made a tremendous jump, uh, you know, Maxwell, the platform, uh, over the previous generation. And even though the Z is a beast, it is unfortunately based on older architecture, which uh, that's part of that 876 clock speed. Uh, but again, the CUDA cores having 5,760 is just mind-numbing on a single card solution. 12 gigs of RAM, again, that is really where the future proofing is, in my opinion. Of course, you need competent GPUs to complement that, and this has far more than competency. It's just not the fastest gaming card anymore. Uh, so something to be said for it. It's not for everyone, even at its current price. You can certainly achieve better gaming performance for less money just by going with two 980s with four gigs of RAM. But remember, you're going to hit a wall when games start to require six to eight. And they've already started requiring six, at least for ultra performance, if that's what you're after. And if 4K is what you're after, this is another really good reason uh, to eye the Z. You're not going to drive multiple displays with 4K with any kind of great frame rate. Again, we're speaking strictly about gaming here, uh, but a single display, you can play pretty much anything you want in the current crop. A year from now, who knows, but at least it'll still be in the mix because of that VRAM competency that it has, and you certainly are paying for it. But again, at this new low price, I believe the Titan Z, the once whale of a bloat in terms of pricing monster that it was, is now actually becoming a value card. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.